Hello and welcome back. We're just going to jump to uh, page 39 of the 1978 catalogue. Now I think that's the first year this model showed up in this livery. It was available I think between uh, 78 into the early 80s, the exact date. I'm not, not sure though. I think they made an initial batch and they didn't, didn't sell out immediately so it, it, it hung on for a bit. If we have a, a quick look at the, uh, the information there on the left. So that's uh, R842 LMS Class 5 460 locomotive and that lovely illustration there which carries through on the box. So we'll just uh, flip that catalogue shut for a second. It's in fairly poor condition this one, we've seen it before. Must get myself a replacement. The box is also in uh, fairly poor condition. The illustration carries through here which is quite nice. So the end of the box, the, uh, the end flap was uh, just stuffed into the box when this model came to me. We've got a, a BT's product code on the, uh, the end there by the looks of it. And we've got that information on that sort of yellow sticky label and this is a sort of later, very late 70s, early 80s style uh, Hornby Railways box. You can see we've got the, the polystyrene in there. Not a great deal of other information on the box as you can see it's in, in really very, very poor condition. Let's just have a look at the back there. And again, what does it say here? Not recommended for children under 36 months. Quite a sensible advice, I imagine. So we'll uh, just slide it out and we'll, we'll have a quick look over the model. Excuse the, the noise of polystyrene and cardboard together. We'll just pop that up there. And we've got that lovely face card with the uh, illustration there and that information about the model, saying it is an artist's impression of the of prototype. So we'll just Pop that down, leave it visible there. We do have the instructions with it. It's always nice to have, have the paperwork and we've got the catalogue number here. R842, 21st of the 5th, 79. So we'll just have a, a swift look into there. And again, I think these are, are quite, uh, becoming quite uniform. But this time you could, you've got information how to gain access to the workings of, of a number of different models. So quite a nice piece of work. But I'm not sure how often this was updated. But, uh, there's a black and white photograph of a handful of models on the, the bottom of the page there. Let's have a look at that. So that's uh, quite a nice picture, isn't it? So I'll just pop that down to one side. So the, the model seems to be upside down here. So two halves to this polystyrene tray. We'll just lift off the top and then we'll be able to have a quick look at the model. This, this locomotive first came along in the early 70s. I had it in a video a little while ago, but it, it did have different valve gear early on by the time it got to the uh, late, uh, sorry, late 70s when this was produced. We've got uh, improved valve gear. I believe it's supposed to be slightly more accurate and perhaps the, uh, the cylinders as well. I've just got the, uh, the earlier model just sitting to one side here. So We'll have a, a swift look at it. It's one that was in those lovely silver seal uh, locomotive type boxes. I know we can see on the end it's got uh, our 859BR460 locomotive black fly back black five class even. So I can't quite get the words out. Let's uh, see if we can just lift off the top another lovely white piece of polystyrene in there. We'll pop that to one side. Obviously the model's the, the other way around, but I'm sure we'll get the hang of it. So if we just have a look at that valve gear, and then uh, we'll have a look at this one together. So if we can just put those there so we can see them both. So there are some differences, aren't there? And I think uh, the shape of this, uh, this cylinder block has, has changed quite significantly. If I just hold those up so we can, we can see them all a little bit closer there. So I think uh, other slight variations were that these uh, little clasps that hold the handrail on have become plastic here, whereas they were they were wire on these earlier ones. And one of the biggest differences, I suppose, is the the um, 
the, the tender is permanently coupled on the early black version where it's, it's separated here which can cause some some pickup issues and there were six traction tires on here whereas this we'll see there are just just the two traction tires on here so you've got pickup on one side of the tender and pickup from the other side on on the locomotive so we'll just pop the uh, the earlier black model to uh, one side perhaps we'll see that in a little while too so we'll just ease the model out of the polystyrene and have a, have a quick look over lovely see-through wheels we've got a flange on the centre and it's they run beautifully and, and smooth uh, a slight rattle coming from there metal on metal so it is a, a lovely smooth runner now I have been running this I hadn't realised I'd made the wheels all dirty again and a modification has been made to improve improve the pickup there you can see that wire is not original and that just runs through onto the main part of the chassis we'll have a, have a swift look inside the model a little bit later on but I think it's a in really quite lovely condition despite the box being really rather poor. So a lovely uh, yellow yellow lining there and black and yellow around the cab. I don't know whether we've got too much cab detail whether we can see again. So I'll try and get an insert picture there for you as well. But uh, really is quite a pretty thing despite not being a, representing anything that actually ever ran. So we'll just pop that there for one side to have another swift look over the tender. You can see that's where it, it slots into the draw bar and it passes the current so collecting from the locomotive and passes through there to the to the motor. It can be a little bit unreliable. But uh, this one seems to seems to work quite well. I think you, you could have uh, the vacuum pipes there. I'm not sure whether this model was actually sold with them, seems to be plastic buffer heads on there. And the slightly later design of the coupling there, it's got a slight slope on it, it seems to be a touch shorter. But, uh, it doesn't seem to have too much trouble coupling up to anything on the uh, on the railway so far, but uh, I haven't run it with a, with a great deal of things, but it doesn't mind the, uh, the uh, Mark II BR coaches I've got. But um, well, uh, I think we should uh, have a look at her in action. Relatively smooth runner for the sort of model it is. A little bit of a, a wobble on those traction tyres, I think. 
but she seems to do okay on the tractor. That, I think, is the, uh, where sometimes the problems come, the, the join between the, uh, the chassis of the locomotive and the tender, it just drops. That pin we just looked at there just, just drops into, uh, into that hole there and makes contact with those two metal contacts, sprung contacts either side. And I think somebody's uh, cross-wired it, not cross-wired, but uh, reinforced the connection by just sort of taking it straight from a, a screw and holding the chassis together and soldering it straight to the, the copper or the metal or a copper alloy type strip, whatever type of metal that is. Because I think really the, the weak point is this screw and where it holds the drawbar and it's the, the slight movements and the, the, uh, the lack of continuity when that happens. There is a, a tiny sprung washer in there. If you have a look at the, uh, the service sheet insert there, you can see there is a washer with a slight curvature in it to try and in, increase the chance of keeping continuity. And I think later models are different, uh, different models in the range. I think I've come across and they've got a sprung loaded mechanism to try and keep tension in there to try and keep the continuity. But uh, perhaps the, uh, the earlier version where it's hardwired is, is the most reliable. But you can see it's fairly neat and tidy on the inside. Interesting, an off center screw there holding the, uh, the cylinder blocks on. Let's have a look at that uh, lovely looking valve gear there. So it is uh, quite a lovely thing. I'll just turn it around and have a, a swift look over the other side. We'll, we'll just pop that down. And then we'll have a, a swift look at the, the motor. Now I forgot to mention when we were talking about the differences between this and the earlier black variant of the model, um, that the, the motor was upgraded as the, as the 70s went on. So the uh, this is quite a, a later style Ringfield motor, um, much simplified I think, not as good in my opinion as the earlier one, um, although it's probably a better idea maybe just having traction tyres on the one side but we've only got the two drive wheels, um, so it probably negotiates the tighter curves a little better rather than climbing off the track with the six traction tyres of the uh, the earlier model. Slightly less weight, the other, the other model is significantly heavier. And we've got that, uh, that later system where, where they uh, held the brushes in by these bent metal pieces here which can fracture over time if you're not careful with them. So we'll just have a, a swift look there at the, uh, the slightly older version. Now it's, we can't uh, separate the tender readily from the, uh, the locomotive so I'll have to be quite careful with it. So I think that is the, the early style Ringfield motor which was first used on the uh, Evening Star, the 9F. And it seems to be, from what people have told me, a direct copy of a, a Fleischmann style motor. You can see they've got caps on the brush brushes there rather than sprung clips. Perhaps definitely a more reliable way of doing it in the long run so they don't break now. You can see they've got the six, tra six traction tyres, sorry. I'm losing my speech again. So all of these wheels drive, but on the slight, the uh, tighter radius curves, they can sometimes just climb off the track. So it, uh, definitely more pulling power with this one, I think. So I think we better pop this down before I drop it. When I was editing back through the video, I realized that I, I hadn't showed you the insides of the body molding. So um, I've shot this a few days later. So here's the, uh, the tender top. We had a, a good look around that before. We'll have a, a look inside. As uh, Hornby's name doesn't appear to be there, but we've got uh, some numbers sort of heat printed into the plastic there. We've got a, a two and a zero. We can just catch that in the light there. I don't know what they refer to. We've got these two little protrusions on the underside here, which help locate the, the tender top onto the tender. And it just clips on. Oh, we, we've got uh, these little clips, four of them, to either side of the motor there and they just locate with these corresponding sort of holes or depressions in the moulding there. Hopefully we can get that in focus enough to see. So that holds it all into place quite nicely. So uh, the same with the, uh, the body moulding for the, the main part of the locomotive. It doesn't have Hornby's name on it. It does have um, the, uh, the catalogue number R8. 
859, and I believe that, that is the model of the, the, the catalogue number of the, um, the black variant we've seen, the very early model of the black five. It's got a preceding code number after it there. So model's in fairly tidy condition. Of course, no motor in here, so you've got no oil splatter. Um, and you can see the ties just poking through the bodywork there, the little gray pieces of plastic. Now this one tends to, these tend to pop out. Um, the, the, when I got it, they were completely out in the box and they just keep springing out. I haven't really had the heart to put a, a touch of glue on it yet to hold them into place. But uh, unlike the earlier black version, which had the wire ties through the, the body molding, a little bit like the Hornby 00 model. And again, we saw a nice uh, insert picture earlier in the video of the inside of there, but I'll just pop that in again. But uh, all fairly tidy condition. You can see the, the, where the metal work for the, the safety valves or, or whistles is just protrudes through the body there. So you've got separately fitted metal items, but uh, all quite neat and tidy. So these are the uh, the coaches I've got on the railway today, well the, the maroon ones anyway. So we've got uh, R433, the uh, LMS coach composite, and uh, R434, the uh, LMS coach brake. So I've got a pair of each, I think we'll pop those down before I uh, drop them. And if we just look at the top two there, you can see there's a slight difference in the boxes there. I think this bottom one is an, an earlier earlier design with the, the silver seal branding on. I think that was dropped, the rest of them are the slightly later style of, of box there. So if we pop uh, these to one side, we'll have a, have a quick look at a, a couple of these. And if you notice, that, uh, looking in here, the, this top one here has quite bright work in the, bright metal work in the window, and this one appears to be more gray. So I think possibly differences in materials used. So whilst this was um, 433 for the composite, in uh, 1980, um, they changed to a paint finish and it became um, 474 uh, through up till uh, 96, I think. Um, I think white rim wheels were added and possibly a, a different um, running number, a coach number at some point. I'm unsure of the dating on that, so quite a long running model. We'll just uh, extract that out of there. Again, an awful noise. We go there. They're in quite quite tidy condition, these coaches. I don't think they've done a great deal of running. I think this sort of regional range of coaches that replaced the earlier Triang style coaches came along in uh, 1977. I think we had a good look at those in an earlier video. I'll leave a few links in the description box if you'd like to have a, a closer look. And I said they have these lovely silver seal wheels and make such a, a terrific noise on the track. I really like it on this uh, System 6 track as well. So we'll just pop out one of the, uh, the brake coaches here. And again, the brake was originally um, 434 and then 1980 became 475. It underwent similar changes into um, paint finish and uh, sort of white rimmed wheels. So as time's moved on and tastes changed or economy perhaps, I think the, uh, the white rimmed wheels was a con an economy measure over these silver seal ones, personally. Although these uh, rims do fall off with uh, over time. Again, excuse the, the noise there. And there we have the brake. And if we look at that, that uh, metalwork in the windows there, that window frame detail is quite dull compared to the uh, to the composite isn't it so I think uh, materials must have changed 
I think uh, the brakes seen a great deal more uh, action than the composite. Perhaps a little bit of a clean could be in order for those. I hadn't realised that was quite that dirty, but I think we'll get by. Again, quite lovely detail, and they really do go great with the, uh, the locomotive on the railway today. So I think we'll stop that about there and uh, we'll see what sort of pulling power she has. So I've got those uh, blue and grey coaches, Mark IIs, sitting in the sidings over here. So let's just uh, run that point. And then we need to uh, attend to the curved point, excuse the, the creaking floorboards again. So we'll uh, switch that one. So that'll give us access to that siding there with the Super 4 and this uh, rake of Mark II blue and greys that we saw in the, the earlier videos. So I've already uncoupled the Bobo Electric, so I think we should be okay there. So I think uh, if she won't pull this whole lot, what, what have we got there? We've got six and we've got four maroons on the, uh, the locomotive already. So I think if we're experiencing trouble, we can get the, uh, the earlier version of the model from the, uh, the early 70s with the six traction tyres on and the, uh, the earlier Fleischmann style motor. So let's see how we do. We'll, sort of, we'll back these through the points, through the, uh, the curved point as well, which could be quite interesting. So let's uh, give this a little power. I think we have those. We'll just check. I haven't uh, backed the whole lot into the uh, Bobo Electric. That would be a little bit on the heavy side, I think. I think we're safe there. So that's uh, quite a rake, isn't it? So what have we got? Uh, four plus uh, six coaches there. So we've got the 10 on, haven't we? So that could be uh, quite a load. So we'll just give that a little power and see if she'll uh, pull those out of the siding through the points. Let's see if we can get a bit of a close-up of the locomotive as she moves away. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Must go and close those points. And let's see if we can uh, turn around and follow around the layout and catch up with them. Excuse the, the change in zoom there. So a bit of friction developing there, coming into that curve. I think we might need a little bit more power there just to uh, compensate for that. Just turn it up just a fraction. And it's looking pretty good. Well, I think that's rather impressive with just the, the two traction tyres. Well, 
What do we think? A little more power once she's out of that uh, set of curves. See how she does with that. I think we'll just stop that there, so I don't think there was any need to uh, double head that with the earlier model, although it might be quite nice to see them all running together. But uh, I think that's quite a rig. I'm quite impressed with the, the, uh, the motor and the two traction tyres. Of course, that's all completely on the level. If you have a look at what I've been doing with the station here, although we didn't have any of this in last week, the, everything came to a halt just as we got to uh, this sort of electrif uh, not electrification, end of the electrification is what I meant to say there. So the, uh, the overhead gantries would come to an end about here. So I've uh, extended that around as we saw last week. And I've got a, a set of points in here. Another one, we've got these curved one, two curved ones there. So this is for further development. And we've got these very, very long uh, platforms in and I've managed to get in the, the hydraulic buffers which I never managed to include on the, the other layout sadly I could never never find a space for them so I think uh, we might have a have a look at uh, those in a, in a second but let's just have a, another look at what I'm doing with the uh, the platform so I'm going to develop the station in the next few weeks and just add a few buildings and see how we go and so I've just become a little bit more carried away with this than I had anticipated. And uh, there's the, the end of the line so far. So I'm planning to develop that a little bit further. Perhaps a turntable. I'm not quite sure at the moment. So I've got that uh, early 70s turntable, which we could get in somewhere down here, perhaps. Or um, I've got uh, a, a late... Um, late 90s one strangely you saw it in when I showed the picture of a very early layout it's one my son had for for a birthday on, on the layout that's still in the box um, but uh, I think we might get a bit more straight in here straight platform and a, and a, and a line in up to about there and a, another hydraulic buffer so I've just pinched a, a power clip from the other side of the layout there and um, We'll just hook this up so we can carry out a quick experiment in the uh, the sidings at the station. So I'm trying to glance at this and through the camera and keep it somewhere in the right vicinity at the time. As I was saying, I've got uh, rather carried away with the uh, experiment with the station there. Now we'll we'll get on the uh, the black version of the model as well, so we can have some double heading to end with. I think, but now really. What we want to have a look at is these um, hydraulic buffers. Now, they were been in production for a long, long time, and they still are in production. I was quite surprised, but I think we've got the, uh, the 1965 catalogue here. Let me just swap hands. Excuse the wobble. So I think this is the 11th edition. I think that's the, the 65 um, edition. So I think they, they came along in that period, just, just prior to the, uh, the changeover at Trying Hornby, from what I understand, but uh, the, the one I have in this buff colour comes along in, in a Trying Hornby box rather than a, a Trying Railways box like it would have been perhaps in 65. So there we are, R394, and they are still on the Hornby website today, although they, they are in a, in a grey colour now. I'm not quite sure when they changed to grey, I'm thinking early 70s with the switch over to a System 6 track. So that one's a, a sort of a non-colour, I think that's been in the, perhaps in the sunlight. Um, and they did change the, uh, the design of them slightly, so that one's clearly designed to uh, go over and clip onto um, Super 4, obviously you could get that over the System 6 as well, uh, but I think System 6 came along, they refined the design so they were no longer sort of compatible with the, 
Super 4, they, they wouldn't accommodate the, the rail if you have a look at that insert picture. You can see the, the two significantly different heights of, of rail there that they would have to uh, encompass. So I think the, the final sort of exclusion of Super 4 must have happened sometime in the early 70s from the design, but quite, quite pretty things. As I say, I really wanted to get these on the layout last time, but I, I couldn't find a space for them. And uh, have we got uh, Triang's name in there? I think it's it's buried so deep down there, I don't think we're going to be able to get... Um... Oh, there we go. We've just got Triang there in the top top left, haven't we? And I think we've got uh, Made in England right down there. We can't quite see that. And I think maybe one of these has got Made in China, so this is quite a late one. So obviously I think the Hornby name might be in there. Let me have a look at that. So that's got a part number on it in there. And then what have we got at the other end? I think that says Maiden in China there. I don't think it's actually got a Hornby on it. So they're quite lovely things. I think the, the later ones seem to have quite bright metalwork compared to the uh, the very early the very early ones, so the metalwork seems to be much darker. And that lovely little lantern there would have been a nice feature if that could have uh, been illuminated, wouldn't it? I think the Hornby 00 made a, a buffer stop with uh, an illuminated section. But there we go. So I suppose the thing we have to do now is uh, run the locomotive into the buffers, isn't it? So let's see how we do with that. We'll take that back a bit. Excuse me, uh, tipping the camera over there. Reckless. But I imagine every child in the land who acquired these ooh, we seem to have a little bit of a stick there. I think that could be some of that dirty track coming into play there. So let's take that back a bit. And let's try it again a little more gently, perhaps. You can imagine every wagon or coach behind it would have jumped the rails by now. It would uh, be an experiment for another day, perhaps. So let's just take that back and we'll have one more go. Yeah, I think you could do that all day long. But uh, interesting things, long running item in the range. And you see, I've got one, I've got a box from a sort of early 80s style one there. So I think uh, we'll get the, uh, the Black 5 early version on with this lot and we'll just finish up with a bit of a run round with that. So there, I've got the other the other model on as well with the uh, slightly earlier valve gear there so that makes up quite a train doesn't it so we'll uh, give that a little power and then uh, we'll see how we do with that Now I think that looks rather impressive. I think the earlier model is a bit more enthusiastic than the maroon model. So I think it makes sense to have that out front.
go. Thanks again for watching. It really is hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll see how much I've managed to uh, develop this station perhaps and uh, we'll see if we can find another interesting model from the uh, 80s to, to have a, a run around this uh, potentially temporary layout. Thanks again. Goodbye now.